Hi everyone and welcome back to my Lawn Bowls for Fun channel. Alec here. The last video I made was about touches and uh, I used a little red book, the, uh, the Laws of the Sport of Bowls, the Crystal Mark 3rd edition, which is the latest set of rules out for bowls. And I covered section 1.4 in the book, which is all about touches. Uh, the last thing I didn't do though in that section was about dead bowls because I was running out of time I didn't want the video to be too long so I thought I'd cover that separately so that's what I'm going to do today again what I'll do is I'll use the book I'll read what the law says from the book and then I'll explain uh, in a little more detail what that means because sometimes it's not when you read it you think well, what does that mean so uh, I'll explain that keep it simple I'm using the books to make sure I don't forget anything myself. So let's uh, talk about dead bowls. A bowl is a dead bowl if it is not a toucher and comes to rest in the ditch. Well, I did cover that in the, in the toucher section. Um, but yeah, if, it, if, if the bowl goes in the ditch on its journey or even is pushed into the ditch later at any point and it's not a toucher, it's obviously removed from play. It's a dead bowl. Two, it is not a toucher and rebounds onto the rink after contact with the face of the bank or with the jack or a toucher in the ditch. Again, I covered the touches in the ditch. If, it's, if it touches the jack or a touch in the ditch and goes in the ditch itself, it's removed from play because it can, it can only become a toucher if it touches the jack when the, when the jack is on the field of play, not in the ditch. The other one is an unusual one. If you should for whatever reason fire or send the bowl down at considerable speed and it bounces off the back of the ditch and then comes back onto the green it's a dead bowl because at one point during its journey it's left the green by hitting the bank it's gone it hasn't gone into the ditch but it was, a, it was over the ditch uh, it will then be removed from play because it's not allowed to stay down a live bowl once it hits that bank so that's an unusual one you won't see that very often but I've seen it a few times where a bowl has hit the ditch, come back onto the green, and it's then removed from play because it's dead. Number three, after completing its original course or after being moved as a result of play, it comes to rest at a distance of less than 14 metres as measured in a straight line from the centre of the mat to the nearest point on the bowl. So when you deliver the bowl down the green, if it doesn't go more than 14 metres, for example, it's removed from play. I don't know why that, that rule was introduced. I think some years ago it must have come in where if you wanted to put a blocker in, maybe bowlers were putting bowls just five or six yards down the green and they decided, no, no, that's not, that's not really on. It has to go at least then 14 metres. Uh, so again, you normally know when that happens, if someone um, makes a mistake on the mat, they, they normally drop the bowl when they're just going to release it or hit the ground a bit heavy and it doesn't go very far at all. The bowl has been delivered, you don't get to do it again, um, it's just removed from play because it has, has to go at least 14 metres. Uh, number four, it passes completely outside the boundaries of the rink play after being moved as a result of play. So the, the bowl obviously has to be on, on the rink that you're playing and if it has moved onto another rink, uh, either in its own journey or um, if it's pushed onto another rink by another bowl later on, it's obviously not on the rink anymore and it's removed from play. Don't forget though, the bowl has to be completely out of the rink. If uh, part of the bowl is only out or if most of it's out and still a little bit of it is still on the rink, it still counts as live. Just think of tennis and football where they, they have that line. The whole of the ball has to be over the line for it to be out and that's the same in bowls. So here's an example of a jack that is on the line but partially uh, the jack is uh, still on, on the green and you can see that it's therefore a live jack. And here's a bowl in the same situation, partly overhanging uh, the line but still clearly in. If it was even here, like that, you can see only a small part of it is actually in, on the green, on the rink that we're playing, but it is still a live bowl. If it was here, it would be out, 
but just having a little bit over the line counts as in. Uh, in its original course, it passes outside the boundary of the rink on a bias which would prevent it from re-entering the rink of play. Um, or, in its original course, it comes to rest outside the boundary of the rink, even though it may have come to rest in contact with an outside edge of line jack. So, uh, again, sometimes you send a bowl down the green and you've either put the wrong bias on it or you've sent it way too wide and it's never going to come onto the green. Especially if it's going to interfere with another game, then you would just stop it and, it, and remove from play because it was never going to come back onto the green on the rink that you're playing. And as for the, um, the, the last part of that, where it comes to rest against it, the outside edge of a line jack. I've never seen this, but it is possible, I suppose, that the jack might be right on the line itself. And if the bowl then comes up and rests against that jack, just touching it, but the bit it's touching is outside the, the rink, then it's removed from play. It doesn't matter that it's a toucher. It's not actually on the rink, so that's removed as well. Pretty straightforward, really. Again, I've never seen that happen, but it could happen. Here's a situation where the jack is clearly in the rink, the ball has come up the green and it's rested against the jack, but it's actually entirely out of the rink itself. So it's removed from play, it's a dead ball. If there's any doubt as to whether a ball or a jack is uh, on the green or not, and there isn't string, there very rarely is a, a, a string marking the edge of the rink, but here we are, this is what we use at our club. It's, it's very basic, but it's just a, a long bit of string which can be placed on the green if there's any doubt. So as you can see, although it's very crude, just put a nail in the green. Just put this point at one end of the green right next to the marker and you pull the string all the way down to the other end if there's any doubt. I've only ever seen this used once at our club in 38 years. Usually it's pretty obvious which is in and which is out. But it sometimes, in an important game, if it's a very important uh, shot counting in or out, you would have to, if there's any doubt, you'd use something like this to determine whether the shot was in or out of the green. Now, a bowl is not a dead bowl if it is carried by a player while inspecting the head. You sometimes see that, a skip on his last bowl, he's not sure what he wants to do, he's got the bowl in his hand, he starts walking down the green to, to study the head, he is allowed to do that. It doesn't count as a dead bowl. Next one, in its original course, it comes to rest within the boundary of the rink, even though it may have passed outside the side boundary of the rink during its course. That, that's not unusual, actually, it, because especially if the jack is moved to the edge of the rink and you have to go onto another rink to get anywhere near it because one side might be blocked or if you're playing on a very far surface it's quite common for you to have to play onto another rink um, let's say especially if the jack has moved uh, towards the edge of that rink anyway so as long as it when it stops it's it's on the rink that you're playing on then that's fine uh, next one if it if it is a toucher which rebounds from the face of the bank onto the rink of play. So where a few minutes ago I mentioned about a ball hitting the bank and coming back onto the green is removed from play, but a toucher is allowed to do that. If a toucher uh, hits the bank and comes onto, on, back onto the rink, that is fine. Because again, a toucher going into the ditch is live. It's therefore going not into the ditch, but hitting the bank and coming back, it still stays in play. So next, if a toucher which comes to rest on the top of a jack or another toucher at rest in the ditch. Well, again, I don't think I've ever seen that, but yes, it's a toucher. If it's resting on another toucher or the jack that's in the ditch, it's fine, it's still in play. Or it comes to rest on top of the jack or any bowls that are to rest on the boundaries of the rink. Again, I've never seen that personally, but I suppose it could happen. But as long as that bowl is in the rink, and it has to be completely out of the rink to be a dead bowl. As long as part of it is on the rink, it still counts. The next one's quite a long bit. I'll read it out. The skip or opponents of singles must decide whether a bowl is dead or not as they, soon as they realise it is necessary. If the players do not realise that a decision is necessary as soon as the bowl comes to rest, a decision can still be made even if a number of bowls have been played after the bowl in question has come to rest. If they cannot reach an agreement, they must ask an umpire to make a decision. 
I think that just means that um, even if you don't realise a bowl is out of play until much later on in that end, uh, and then you realise it is, then it must be removed for play. Yeah, and a dead bowl must be removed from the rink of play as soon as it has been declared dead, whenever that is. So that's it. It's a, quite a quick one on, on dead bowls. It's quite straightforward, isn't it, really? Nothing to it. OK, so while I'm here and it's such a lovely day, I might as well continue with another section I was going to do, and that's section 1.5, Alive and a Dead Jack. So let's cover that now. Same idea, I'll read the rule from the book and then I'll explain in a little bit more detail. Right, live jack in the ditch, this first part is. A jack that is moved by a bowl in play into the front ditch within the side boundaries of the rink of play is a live jack. So yeah, any, any jack that goes in a ditch stays live, quite straightforward. Two, the position of the jack in the ditch must be marked by a white indicator. I've covered this when we did uh, when I did the uh, the section on touches, which is not more than 50 millimeters wide and not more than 100 millimeters high, and is placed vertically either against the face of the bank or on top of the bank, immediately in line with the jack. A non-touch while it is partly on the rink and partly overhanging the ditch. Again, I covered this when we talked about touches. Uh, if the jack is moved by a valid bowl by a toucher or by that unlikely event that a non-toucher is touching the jack and moved it but it's still in play because it hasn't fallen into the ditch it's being held up by another bowl maybe um, then it still is a valid movement of the jack and it then you have to move the marker to where the jack now is if the jack in the ditch is displaced by a non-toucher entering the, the ditch law 38.5.3 will apply that's simply that if the jack is moved by in a bowl that isn't a toucher, it's put back where it was. Again, I did cover that in touches, so have a look at that video. If uh, once its position has been marked, there's a further valid movement of a jack in the ditch, as described in law 18.3, its new position must be marked, as I've just explained. Right, move on to number 19, that's a dead jack. If the jack is moved by a bowl in play, it is a dead jack if it passes above the face of the bank. So, not often, I've not seen this very often, but it can happen. The jack is moved by a bowl that becomes a touch as soon as it touches the jack, but the jack is, bounces over out of play above the ditch and goes on to the, to the path. We've got a path here. Uh, obviously, it's, uh, it's a dead jack and the end is replayed. It passes completely outside the boundary of the rink of play. Again, if the jack is moved and it goes on to the next rink next door, obviously, again, it's a dead jack and the end is replayed. It comes to rest in any hollow in the face of the bank or comes to rest at a distance of less than 20 metres as measured in a straight line from the centre of the mat to the nearest point of the jack. So where a jack is, say for example, is 23 metres away, if the jack is hit and it bounces off another bowl and comes back towards the mat where you've just bowled from, it has to be end up at least 20 metres from the front of the mat or it's a dead jack. Very unusual to see that, but it happened to me in a game. I fired when we were three or four down. I hit the jack beautifully but it bounced onto another bowl and came back halfway down the green. <laughs> and obviously it was a dead jack, so we had to replay the end. So you will see that sometimes, I've done it myself. A jack is not a dead jack if it comes to rest, uh, I either on top of a toucher rest in the ditch, again, it's a toucher in the ditch, the jack can rest on that if it wants to, no reason why not. Uh, on top of any bowls that are at least within the boundaries of the rink. Uh, I, again, I've never seen this, but I can imagine if you've got two or three bowls really tight together and a jack is moved and bounces and ends up on top of those bowls, extremely unlikely, and I've never seen it in 38 years of bowling, it would count as a live jack. So a bit of a noisy aircraft flying around at the moment. 19.3. 
The skips or opponents in singles must decide whether a jack is dead or not as soon as they realise it is necessary. If the players do not realise that the decision is necessary as soon as the jack comes to rest, the decision can still be made even if a number of bowls have been played. So I've covered that a little bit before. A dead jack is a dead jack and it doesn't matter when you discover it's a dead jack but as soon as you do realise it's a dead jack it's removed from play and the end is replayed. If they cannot reach an agreement, they must ask the umpire to make a decision. If an umpire is not available, then ask another experienced bowler at the club to make that decision. Once you've asked that person to make that decision, you have to buy and buy that decision, even if you don't like the answer. That to. If the jack is dead, uh, the end is dead and Law 20 will apply. However, controlling bodies may decide not to have ends declared dead. Instead, they can decide to have the jack respotted. So, in outdoor play, in the United Kingdom anyway, um, if the jack goes out of the confines of the rink, the end is replayed. Um, indoors, where you have a time limit game, usually of two hours, we don't do that. It's re-spotted on, on two, there's two other marks on the green where the jack can be placed when it's re-spotted. If it goes off on the left-hand side of the, of the, of the green, it's respotted on the left hand respot position. If it goes off the right hand side of the green, it goes on to the right hand side respot position. And the last section uh, in uh, 1.5 Live and Dead Jack is about a dead end. So let me just cover that. I think we've covered most of it anyway, but I'll just read out the, the, what it says. A dead end is not counted as a completed end, even if all the bowls required to be played have been played. So, yeah, that's not unusual that if, if you're two or three shots down and you've got the very last bowl in your hand and you fire and the, the jack goes out the rink, um, despite all the fact that all the bowls have been used, it's a dead end because you've, uh, you've killed the end, which is probably what you wanted to do because you were three or four shots down. So the end is replayed. A, a dead end must be replayed in the same direction. Now this next bit is really interesting because a lot of people get this wrong, but a dead end must be replayed in the same direction unless skips or opponents and singles agree to play in the opposite direction. If the jack and bowls need to be transferred to the opposite end of the rink before the end is replayed, they must be transferred in a way which avoids distracting players on neighbouring rinks. This is quite important. So. All the bowls are down this end, the end's de being declared dead. You must take them, we don't have to do this, unless both skips agree. In a friendly game, um, most people would say, well look, let's just carry on, there's a dead end, it's not counted, but we'll bowl back in this direction now, rather than take all the bowls back. But that's only really in a friendly game, and both skips have still got to agree with that. In a serious game, really, just take them back and replay the end in the direction it should be played in. I think a lot of people think that the defaulting side don't get to choose, but that is wrong. It clearly states that it must be played in the same direction unless both skips agree. Even in a serious game, if both skips agree it's pointless taking all the balls back, then you can just leave the balls here and bowl back in the other direction. But normally, if one person wants to do that, one of the skips wants to bowl in the same direction they have been playing on, then they must do that. If the skips or opponents in singles, the umpires, declare an end dead, the first to play in that end must also play first when the end is replayed. Yeah, so that's quite straightforward. The, the, whoever placed the jack, whoever put the mat down and sent the jack down the green when that end was played, despite the fact that it's declared dead, does it again. You don't change over. Next, uh, the end will continue if when the jack is at rest on the rink, it is driven against the face of the bank and rebounds onto the rink of play. Or when the jack is at rest in the ditch, it is moved by a toucher and, the takes, and it takes it back onto the rink. So yeah, if, if the jack hits the bank and comes back onto play, it stays live. And in the unusual event that a jack already resting in ditch is moved 
in a way that it brings it back onto the rink of play. I've never seen that again in all the years I've been bowling, but I suppose it could happen in theory. Then again, the end does continue. So that's it, section 1.5 covered. All about live and dead jacks and dead ends, of course. So that's it for me on a lovely sunny morning here at Farnborough in England. Last time I'm gonna be on this green will be this Sunday. The green then closes for the winter and I'll be uh, back indoors. So the next video I do will be from Camberley Indoor Bowling Club, where I now play. Right, so keep well, stay safe, enjoy your bowls, and I'll see you again soon.